One of the senators who will be considering that plan, Senator Ed Markey of Massachusetts, Democrat, joins us now this morning. Senator, thanks so much for taking the time this morning. Thank you. Good morning. You, you could forgive me, I, I imagine, and others watching this broadcast now who are confused as to what exactly is going on on the Hill, because the president is going there, uh, putting his muscle behind this, asking lawmakers to trust him on the framework. Steny Hoyer says he wants to have a vote today, but Bernie Sanders, Ilhan Omar in the House saying they won't move forward. They need the language of this. They're, they're not going to move unless they have clarity. Can you tell us, based on your conversations with Democratic leadership, what's happening? Uh, well, again, I, I'm not privy to exactly what the president is saying right now inside of the Democratic caucus. Mm -hmm. But my own belief is that, <clears throat> yes, uh, the bill that has roads and bridges in it, it's very important. But so isn't the bill uh, that has universal pre-K, that has child care, uh, that has the climate provisions, the, the climate accelerated, the climate, uh, the, the energy uh, tax breaks, the civilian climate core. That's also critically important. And it's inside of the framework, but the devil is in the details. And we yeah. still have today, tomorrow, Saturday, Sunday, we can resolve all of these issues. We can just sit down and get it to the table so that we not just uh, are dealing with the framework, but we actually have the specifics, mm -hmm. the details, so that we understand completely what it is that we are voting upon. It sounds like you don't feel the urgency, as some Democratic leaders do, and the president, frankly, of coming to an agreement today. Are you comfortable with the Democratic Party sending their own president to Europe, to G20, empty-handed? The president has acknowledged uh, that his credibility is on the line, that, that if he can't deliver before coming here, he will arrive here somewhat diminished. Are, are you comfortable sending him here empty-handed? Well, I obviously trust Joe Biden. Uh, I know mm -hmm. that he is going to advocate uh, for the strongest possible social programs, uh, for the strongest possible uh, climate provisions. And a lot of that is in this bill, if we can complete it. Uh, but ultimately, we still have more time uh, before next week when Joe Biden is in Glasgow. And my belief is that we can resolve all these issues uh, and then with certainty uh, the Democrats can vote both for uh, the infrastructure bill and for Joe Biden's Build Back Better program with all of the details that are very clear to everyone, not just um, in the Congress, but all across the country. It sounds like you're almost granting, uh, accepting that this is not going to happen today. Well, I have not seen any uh, specific legislative text with regard to what is in the legislation on taxes, uh, on Medicare, on Medicaid, uh, or on uh, the exact formulation uh, of any of the climate provisions, even though I'm very optimistic uh, that we'll have a very bold program. Uh, I think it is wise uh, for the members of Congress to actually see the legislative language uh, before uh, we're asked to support it. So, 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 it's, so you're saying that a framework that lays out this plan in broad strokes is not enough for you. You want to see the language in the law, as some other Democratic lawmakers are demanding? I want to ensure that we have 50 votes in the Senate mm -hmm. uh, for the framework and for what the details that would be filled in for that framework. Mm -hmm. And right now, we don't have a commitment for 50 votes. And at that point, I'm more than willing uh, to vote for the roads and bridges, uh, the infrastructure bill and for the social programs and the uh, climate vision. So I, I think that we're, we're very close right now. We have a chance to get it done. We just have to keep our nose to the grindstone up here on the hill, keep working as hard as we can for the next three or four days, and we can finish it mm -hmm. and uh, give a, a package to uh, the president that he can uh, talk to the rest of the world about. You're, of course, on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. As I mentioned earlier, the president has acknowledged that his credibility, not just at home, but on the world stage, is at stake in these negotiations, primarily on, on climate commitments, because from here in Rome, he goes on to, to Scotland, as, as you mentioned, for the UN Climate Summit. Uh, you hear from allies, I've spoken to diplomats, who see a diminished presidency here. Are you concerned uh, that, that Joe Biden's position now and the country's position in the world uh, has lost some of the shine uh, that it had when he came into office. 
I think as Joe Biden arrives in Glasgow, he's ready to reclaim uh, the leadership of the, for the United States on climate change. He's mm -hmm. not going to be preaching temperance from a bar stool. He's not going to be telling the rest of the world uh, mm -hmm. to do something that we're not doing ourselves. That's why the, the outline of the provisions which are uh, in potentially going to be voted upon uh, successfully in the Senate are so mm -hmm. important. Uh, and combined with what will happen at the, the state level, uh, combined with what the administration mm -hmm. can do on raising uh, fuel yep. economy standards with executive action, uh, there's a real promise and, uh, and real leadership that Joe Biden is going to provide for the rest of the world. So I'm confident that that will happen and let's work as hard as we can mm -hmm. uh, for the next three or four days uh, to finish it off so he'll have it there next Monday and Tuesday uh, for the world leaders. Briefly on China, there, there are genuine concerns about growing tensions between the U.S. and China. And we heard from the Taiwanese president today acknowledging for the first time publicly that U.S. troops are on the ground in Taiwan. This is something that China uh, opposes greatly. It, it's an enormous uh, step to publicly acknowledge that. Do you believe that that is a necessary deterrent against China invading Taiwan? Uh well, again, our official policy is a one-China policy, and it should continue to be a one-China policy. We do not want uh, to in any way be precipitating a, a, a military conflict between China and the United States. That would ultimately be catastrophic for both countries and for the rest of the world. We're talking about two countries that have nuclear weapons that are already deployed. So there has to be ultimately uh, a diplomatic resolution of any of the conflicts that we have with China, including climate change and Taiwan. Uh, there is no military uh, solution to uh, any of these issues with China. So having military there from okay. the United States may be one thing, but it would not be sufficient in any way in order to affect positively a military conflict with China. It would be catastrophic. Okay. Senator Ed Markey, thanks so much for joining us this morning. No, thank you for having me on.